In this video, I'm gonna show you why as an e-learning designer developer, you should have power toys from Microsoft. Okay, I know what you're all thinking. Paul's done this video before. In fact, I think I've done it twice before. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, software is constantly being updated. New features are added and new capabilities are there. And certainly what I wanna do is share with you one of the most important pieces of software that I install on every Windows PC that I use. Let's get started. So the application we're talking about today is Power Toys. Now, officially, this is a beta piece of software, but it's been available for Windows users for a long time now. Certainly all of the time that Windows 11 has been available and for at least a year, possibly two, for Windows 10. Power Toys was something that, you know, classic Windows had and had some neat little applications in there, little add-ons that didn't quite make it to the operating system, but, you know, were beneficial, so they were made available. Now, you can get Power Toys from the Microsoft Store. So if you simply visit the Microsoft Store, as I'm doing right here, and just do a search for Power Toys, all one word, and you'll find it here. So just simply, it's a free application. It's uh, currently on version 0.7 or something like that. But there's some really neat features that I think are particularly beneficial to e-learning designer developers like ourselves. So let's go ahead and close the Windows Store here, and I'm gonna go ahead and open the Power Toys tool itself. Generally speaking, you don't need to be running Power Toys in a window like this, it kind of runs in the background, but there's a bunch of um, applications that are built in, most cases activated through a keyboard shortcut and uh, you can customize those keyboard shortcuts. But I've simply learned to you know, get comfortable with those particular keyboard shortcuts. The first one I wanna show you is Color Picker. Now, of course, you're sent logos, you're sent images, you're sent uh, links to websites where they want you to use the brand colors and, and sometimes the, they're, they're not always readily available. So the Color Picker tool is a nice application that you can activate using Windows Shift C, which I'm gonna press right now. And then you get this little follow window next to your cursor that gives you the hex code for the color that your cursor happens to be pointing at. Now, if I go ahead and click on one of the colors that I'm trying to capture, you get this additional window that gives you the hex code, the RGB code, and the HSL code. I don't know what that is myself personally, but I'm sure if you have an application that uses HL, HSL, you'll recognize it. What's kind of cool here is it remembers the colors that you've picked before, and it also has some complementary colors that you can select up here. So quite useful to use if you're trying to capture the look and feel of a particular brand to build their e-learning for them. The next tool that I use quite frequently is Fancy Zones. Now I've been using, if you've been using Windows 11 for a while, you're probably familiar with these fancy zones where you can select different layouts for your application, either by uh, clicking and moving up to the top here uh, for any of your windows, or you can just simply hover over the maximize uh, icon and select where you would like those items to snap to. In this case here, you have your own custom uh, fancy zones that you can create here. So if you press the Windows Shift and left single quotation key, which is just above your tab on most keyboards. So if I type in Windows Shift and press that, I'm given this fancy zones editor. And then of course I can create my new layout. Most of the time what I do is I simply create a layout that is for narrowing the application that I wish to show on screen. So let's say I don't want the application to be within the first 300 pixels or the last 300 pixels. So I can create my own fancy zone 
and then save and apply that to whatever application that I'm using here. So to activate that, you simply hold down your shift key and grab your window, whatever it might be, and allow it to snap to one of your fancy zones here. And now I have the layout that I want, which is ideal for capturing a particular application at a certain on-screen resolution. The next tool that I find myself using from time to time is the image resizer. Now this doesn't have a keyboard shortcut to activate it, but instead the functionality will be added to Windows Explorer. So if I navigate to a folder where I happen to have some images, and if we just take a quick look at these images, you can see that you know, they're rather large in size. These are 7,000 by nearly 5,000 pixels. This one here is 8,000 by over 5,000 pixels. So these are quite large. Now, the reality is, is in e-learning, I don't need such large images. So what I can do is I can select all of these images, which I downloaded from Adobe Stock here, right-click on those, and select Resize Pictures. Now this allows me to choose a preset size that I think is appropriate. Perhaps medium would be a better choice for an e-learning course, 1366 by 768. Or you can choose custom and you can say, well, I want these all of these images to fit within 1024 by 627, which is the default in uh, Adobe Captivate, for example. So I can choose to make these pictures smaller, but not larger. I can uncheck that. Uh, I could check, ignore the orientation of pictures. Um, I'll do that in this case here. And uh, if I want to resize the images themselves, I would select resize the original pictures. In other words, it won't create copies. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that because you might need the originals for some other purpose. And if you see it necessary, you could also remove the metadata, which are, you know, things like details about the photo itself that are embedded in the actual photo. And we can go ahead and resize this. This will create a bunch of copies that are already appropriately sized for my e-learning course. And you'll see them, they're renamed with the words, uh, custom in parentheses after each one there. And of course, if you were to look at the details here, you can see one of the huge benefits of this resizing is it really reduces the size of those images as well. And of course, that's just going to optimize the image uh, size or the size of your e-learning project as well. Make it run a little faster. Now the next tool built into Power Toys that I think is really important to e-learning designer developers, if you do any kind of software training, like what I do on my YouTube channel, you may wish to use the Enable Find My Mouse option. And this is a really neat feature because as you're teaching people about software, sometimes it's hard to see where their mouse is. So what I can do is I can use the activation method of pressing the left control key on my keyboard twice to give me this spotlight effect. So if I do that right now, you'll see I can kind of spotlight in. Here's where my mouse is. And next we're going to click over here. And next we're going to click over here. And, you know, you can use it to really help augment any training that you're creating where learners need to follow your mouse. Another thing you can do is you can enable the mouse highlighter. What this does is when you activate this feature by pressing uh, Windows Shift H, every time you click your mouse, you'll see a little highlight on your screen to emphasize that's where the mouse is and that's where I clicked. The next tool that uh, is actually new for me because of course I used a different application for this particular functionality for quite a few years. I used to use a tool called Pure Text, which I still encourage you to use if you don't want to use Power Toys. Pure Text can also be found in the Windows Store. But what's great about Paste as Plain Text, it does exactly that. I don't know how many times I've copied something from an Office document, such as PowerPoint or Word, 
and pasted it into my well-designed e-learning authoring tool course and have it change my fonts and change the color of my fonts and all that stuff here. So this allows you to paste any copy text sans any of the coloring, any of the formatting, bold, italic, underline, all that stuff will be stripped out. And this is real easy to use because of course, control V is your paste keyboard shortcut anyway. You just gotta add the Windows key to that and this works really well. Lastly, I wanna make an honorable mention. I've not used this, but I could see how this feature could come in very handy. So let's say someone sends you an image, uh, perhaps it's uh, an image that is, you know, uh, text, but of course it's part of the image. So I can't simply copy the text uh, as I would. This is a new feature, at least for me anyway, where I can extract the text from an image and the keyboard shortcut for that is Windows Shift T. Let's try it out on this little meme that I found online. So I'm gonna type in Windows Shift T. It's gonna give me a crosshair and I simply draw it around where I wish to capture that text from. I can open whatever application I wish to paste that in. I could simply open up Notepad and we'll paste that in. So it's a little bit off, it's not perfect, but if it was a lot of text, it would save me a lot of time rather than having to type this out all over again. So hopefully you found Power Toys useful and consider installing it. This has not been sponsored by Microsoft or anything like that. It's just a free tool that I know that I've used quite a bit and it gets installed on every Windows computer that I currently run with. So it's available for free. It's technically still in beta, but it's been in beta for years. I don't know if it'll ever go to version 1.0. I think it's on version 0.7 right now, but hopefully you enjoy it as much as I have. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to provide lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.